Hi everyone, this is the second video in this series of integrations. In my previous video, I have shown you how we can send data from third party application to ServiceNow instance using post request, basic auth, and the table API of ServiceNow. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the same using scripted REST APIs. So let me just navigate directly to the scripted REST API. And I'm going to create a new one over here. The name of my scripted REST API is demo scripted. And I'm going to save this record. And let's add a new resource over here. Post, I will be changing to post, and this is the area where my script needs to fit in. So let's get started. First of all, I am going to get the request body from the request object. Now request data object over here contains the payload data which is coming from the third party application. In my case that application would be Postman. And if the payload contains data for multiple records, then it would be an instance of an array. And if it contains uh, only data for a single record, then it will be simply an object. So if my request data is an instance of array then I'm going to process those records over here if not then here so whatever the data is coming let me uh, create a function in a script include and I am going to save the data in my table using import set I don't want to flood this script area part using a big script that's why I am using a script include so the name of my script include is this which I generally use for any of my demos insert incident data is the name of my function and then I'm going to pass the request data object over here so my scripted REST API part is almost complete I just need to code this function so that I am able to insert the data into my incident record so if you have not already watched my previous video where I have demonstrated the inbound integration using table API I created a staging table and I am going to import the, import the records in the staging table instead of directly importing it into my incident table and that's the recommended practice as well. So Here's my request data object. Now the name of my staging table is U uh, underscore test underscore INC underscore um, integration. I am going to initialize this let's say I am 
is showing short description and description so let me check the exact name in the back end so this is my short description field and this is the request data let's assume the name of my field is short underscore description in the payload now again i'm going to go back for description this is the name of my description field in the payload i mean all these are assumptions until and unless i jump to postman and set the actual field values over there along with the field names so the let's say next one is impact and then urgency and then i am going to call dot insert function so now the data which is incoming will be imported in my staging table and using a transform map it will be saved in my incident table as well so let us take a look at the transform map as well then meanwhile this is getting saved This is the same transform map which we created uh, for the table API demo. So I have the field map for description, short description, impact, urgency. I think that is what is required for now. Now I am going to jump back to my scripted REST API. And I'm going to copy this URL and paste it to my postman. And I'm going to update the URL in my postman. Even double slash. I'm using the authorization as basic auth using the same user which we created in the last video. Okay. And this is the sample payload which I have already demonstrated using, but now let's update it. Impact is one, urgency is two. Now let's see how things turn out. I'm going to click on send. Status here is 200. Okay. Now let's go back to the service now instance. And I am going to check in the incident table if a new incident is created
so this is the same short description and description which i have given in my postman tool which in your case you need to assume it in a way that the request is being sent by a third party application so this is how we can create a ticket by a third party tool and using scripted rest apis in service now now let's add a catch to it so i'm going to consider a couple of other scenarios as part of the same demo so that we have a clear picture of how things are working now this was the case when only data for a single record was sent now consider a scenario where data for multiple records has been sent then how we are going to process the same so if things are not already clear it will be clear in a second and <clears throat> this is the data for the first incident this is for the second one so when i send this data it should be creating two incidents in service now instance which will not happen now because when i click on send the script to rest api will be called it will enter into this if condition because it is an instance of an array but it will not work because i don't have anything over here i simply did not write any code in this particular if condition there is no hard and fast tool as such to insert multiple incidents let me simply go to the postman and try to click it on send just to make sure things are not working as expected i refresh the list this incident is still the first one in the list and let us just simply call it out here so i am going to So request in request data <laughs> I'm going to call this particular function again and again. that's it let's see if this works out or we will have to maybe take some other route back to postman click on send it says 200 okay again back to incident list something is created but without a description and short description created by the same user let's try to find out a reason for the same Uh, before checking anything in the logs or debugging anything, let me try by simply declaring this request. So, request is the name of the out of the box object, so we cannot use the same name. So
I'm going to declare it as request object and let's save this and we'll try it one more time. Send data is sent now. I am go back going go back to the incident list. All right. Looks like we missed something. Take the request in here. So now it is updated. I will click on send again. Minor mistakes. Now we are again missing one more thing. Uh, I mean, these are the steps we need to follow when we are writing a particular script, and we need to be careful about it. Otherwise, it more it would take more time. So now let's try to run through the script while it is not working. When I say variable x in an array variable uh, with variables x, y, z, this signifies the position of the element in the array. So in this case, I am simply passing the position, not the object at that position. So to pass the object at that particular position, I need to pass this object along with the parameters right here. Okay. So consider it as, let's say there is a array named car and this gives me the first position and this gives me the second position, the element at the second position. So what earlier we were doing was, I was simply passing this particular element position value, either 0 or 1. So it's obvious that it won't work. However, it was creating an empty incident without any details because our script was getting called anyway. Now let's save this and see if my understanding of this particular script was right or not. So I'm going to go back to this application. I will click on send again. Let's reload the list. See, both the incidents are created now. First one with the criticality or the priority of one, and the second one with priority of moderate, and this contains one, and this contains two in the short description and description. So far, I have taken into account two use cases. First one is when I was sending the data to my service now instance uh, for only one single record and the second use case was when i was taking into account that the data for multiple incident records is being sent to my service now instance now let's just add another use case to it where i don't want any duplicate incidents to be created now if I'm going to click on send button again, it will again couple of uh, it will again insert couple of incidents into the system. Uh, let's see. So this is creating a uh, duplicate tickets in the system, though the incident number is different. So how we, uh, how can we make sure that this does not happen? For that, I am going to. Uh, include the correlation ID field. 
So I'm going to navigate back to my web service. And now I have added this correlation ID to my web service. Okay. Let's click on update. Continue. So the correlation ID is successfully added to my web service or to my import set table. Now let's go back to the transform map which was created and map this correlation ID field. My source field is correlation ID and my target field on the incident table as well is correlation ID and I am going to mark this field as collase. Let's save the this mapping for the correlation ID field and I am also going to add another field to the payload request which is being sent from postman which is correlation ID. So let's say the correlation ID for the first incident data is INC three one two three. And in the same way okay, let's make it This is one zero 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 two. Okay, as of now, there will be no effect because I'm not saving this field value. So now let us navigate back to our scripted REST API and see where this is happening. So this is happening in this function, which is there in my script include, and here is my script include. So let's save correlation ID as well. Let's save it. Okay, so this code is saved now and let's go back to our transform map. So in my transform map, I can see in the list that correlation ID is the collase field and everything else is not. If you're not already aware what collase field is all about, then it marks the uniqueness of the data. So if the same incident number is being sent by the third party application multiple times, it is only going to update the existing record. It will not create a new record. This is how it works. So I've marked the collase added in the function. There's no need to update my scripted REST API for now. And let me trigger a request. Just to identify, I'm changing it to three and four. 
in the short description click on send navigate back to the incident list refresh it so there, these are the incidents which are created now and let's see if correlation id is present yes it is now let us trigger the same request again without changing the correlation id if i click on send let's refresh the list you can observe that the tickets are not created now because i am using the correlation id functionality usually in uh, practical cases uh, when you're working on any integration let's say there's an integration between pega and service now so when there's a ticket created in pega uh, something should be created in service now as well so pega request should include correlation id which means the ticket number or any unique identifier at pega end so that same ticket is not created multiple times even when an update happens on the ticket at the pega end now if i change the correlation id here see and this one is four if i click on send it should be able to create two more incidents in that particular list let's refresh it so I can see 3434 three, twice and if I go to coalition ID 1234 so this time two incidents are created which was not the case earlier because incident number for the coalition ID was same. So this was about the fact that a new incident will not be created but if I use the same coalition IDs will it update the existing incident. So I am changing the short description to this just to verify whether an update works. Send and the ticket number for 3 and 4 is 389 and 390. Let me refresh the list and you can observe the short description. Changes ticket number remains the same but But the short description changes the whole short description is not taken into account probably due to the limitations that it cannot be more than a particular value of about let's say 40 characters So it looks fine in the short description field probably then yeah since my staging table is having a limit of 40 characters that is why it did not include anything over that uh, but this is how it works this is how we can use scripted rest api to create incident records or records in any other table not necessarily an incident record but this is how scripted rest api works uh, if you want to take a look at the user setup you might want to watch my previous video because user setup is most important in such cases we don't give admin roles to the functional accounts which are created specifically for integrations so that's pretty much it and don't forget to mark your user as to web service access only until and unless your user is supposed to do a uh, lot of other things in the system but that also invite licensing implications if it is only web service access only and the user is just loading some data in the system there as per my understanding are no licensing implications so 
just make sure you're following the best practices and using the right rules for your user. That's it. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.